Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris and today we're going to be continuing on our VGC Series 8 content playing a Groudon team. So we're back with Groudon and Venusaur but a little bit of a different build here. We've got the Stack Attacker inclusion to give us a bit more support in the Trick Room areas. It supports the Groudon, it supports the Stack Attacker and we've got the Thunderous in here as well to give us a little bit of support against primarily Intimidate users, you know because uh, we're very heavy on the, the, the physical side of things, especially with the Groudon and the Stack Attacker and the Thunderous, but that Define ability does help us out uh, to no end and helps us get some checks against things like Charizard that could be a little bit problematic. So uh, the team's really nice, as always. There will be a poker paste down in the description below if you want to check out the details, try it out on Showdown or anything like that, be my guest. And if you stick around until the end of the episode, we'll be throwing up the rental team as always. We'll have a couple of games with the team now, talk about it, how are pilots and things like that. The biggest part of it is going to be that Grim Snarl screen support, which is so kind of pivotal to a lot of this format, and particularly this team as well, to help it kind of operate as well as we want it to. So, hope you enjoyed today's episode as always, and uh, hope you stick around until the end to grab the the Renault for this one. So without further ado, let's find our first opponent of the episode. The first opponent today is running a team of Lugia, Whimsicott, Incineroar, Tapu, Fini, Cortana, and Clefairy. So it screams to me that the Whimsicott's probably got Fling and some sort of berry to activate a weakness policy on the Lugia. That would be my first guess, I think, uh, out of everything. Um, Thunderous here has a great time against pretty much everything on my opponent's team. There's not very much that my opponent's got that's going to be able to really create a big enough dent in it, especially with screen support. Um, so I think we'll go down the route. I mean, we could go first off Incineroar, but I think Grimmsnarl screen support is going to be more pivotal than anything. I think we'll finish off with Incineroar and maybe even... Maybe even Venusaur, but I think Groudon's probably a better play in the late game. It helps us out with a bunch of stuff. Um, and with the Intimidate support as well from Incineroar, I think that's probably a good way to go. I mean, we could forego Incineroar and just go Venusaur. It helps us out against the type of Finny a bunch, but uh, I think my opponent's going to really struggle against the Thunderous, especially because we've got the Max Steel Spike that we can kind of nail down onto the, uh, the Clefairy if that is brought from my opponent to utilize that uh, redirection there see my opponent goes for though obviously got to be very conscious about the the lugia getting boosted up the problem with lugia is i do love it as a pokemon but it's very underwhelming as well because even with the weakness policy boost it's not getting the damage that you would kind of expect from some other restricted uh once they've got that weakness policy power up so let's see Right, well, Lugia and Wimmy coming out for my opponent. I guess the biggest problem here for us would be potentially eject button onto Thunderous from the Whimsicott. That could be a big problem. And if we lose the ability to, to max early on here, it causes all sorts of issues. I think we go for, uh, yeah, we go for max Airstream here into Wimmy. Um, and Lugia going to be predominantly going to be um, special attacker, you know? Uh, so we'll go for the light screen support here because they may go for airstream as well. Urgh, I just I just worry about the eject button fling. We'll switcheroo, whichever one we see from the Whimsicott. That would be my biggest problem here. If we lose Thunderous, it's not the end of the game. It just makes it way more difficult for us to kind of progress a little bit further forward than we uh, we would like to. Lugia going to max. Maybe we would have been better off going after the Lugia as well, you know. But we'll see what my opponent goes for. I think getting the airstream up now is, is always going to be valuable. It's always good looking at uh, trying to um, capitalize in these situations, you know, with your speed control when you've got the opportunity to. Wimmy going for that protect. Okay, well, what are we going to see from... Uh them from the Lugia then. We do get a light screen up, which is a pretty free turn for Grimmsnarl here. Um, and there's the airstream. It keeps us just ahead of the Lugia if they decide to go airstream as well, even though they've got Tailwind, which they can just trigger the next turn if they want. Um, but we can always stand away of the Lugia, you know. There's the airstream. Okay, that's fine. 
Now I think the next turn we do, we go for the, the Thunder Wave into Lugia, and then we go for uh, Max. Um, Max the airstream into Winnie, and it kind of slows down that Lugia a bunch. It just keeps us ahead of it. That's the main thing, you know. It's still probably got its multi-scale. Well, it's definitely got its multi-scale intact. Uh, but if this Whimsicott wants to go for a fling here, it's kind of pinned to the point where it's not going to be able to. Uh, there's a Tailwind. It's more expected as well. And getting the second Airstream for ourselves kind of keeps us uh, at least up to pace with everything else uh, with Thunderous. So Lugia just going to be difficult to take down, honestly. It's going to be... Uh, uh, it's always an obnoxious Pokemon to deal with because it does have access to recovery. Um, it's probably got weakness policy as well. So... We do have the option on the next turn where we can we can suck a punch. Um, and this is the thing, you know, it's very underwhelming. Like it's not like that's a stab attack. It's it's so underwhelming. Coming off Aeroblast, you would imagine. Uh, but it's just very underwhelming with its power. I know we got light screen up at the same time, but you know. But I think that's one of the the, the, the pluses for Lugia, you know? It's got the ability to um, to stick around long enough. It doesn't need the damage output as, as necessarily as much as everything else, you know. Um, okay, well, Max Lightning. Let's go for that. Could we suck a punch? Break the Sash on the Lugia. We're going to boost it if we do, which I kind of would like to avoid if possible. Um, we could bring an Incineroar here. Probably better off doing that, just kind of slowing the game down a bit. Although it is pretty slow at the minute anyway, you know? Um, I'd imagine the Finny to maybe protect. Let's see what it goes for. But the Lugia are going to struggle hard to really deal with the Thunderous. Yeah, there's the Protect. But I mean, we're going to be able to deal with Finny the next turn with a Wild Charge and a Fake Out. So we put on a lot of pressure. I think the thing to do is, is be mindful that the Cartana could be in the back. So maybe getting Incineroar off the field uh, as soon as possible is probably the, the best thing for us to do, um, in all honesty. Let's see where this Luger goes. And this is another Airstream. Oh, it's paralyzed. That's terrible. Terrible for my opponent. We do see that there is uh, the leftovers there on the Tapu Finny. And that's the end of our max turns for me and my opponent. So, uh, parting shot into Lugia, I think, is probably the best play. Because you've got to be mindful. Like, I do think that the... I do 100% think that we do see a weakness policy on that Lugia. So if we can just weaken it a little bit more, keep Incineroar in the back, it's going to help us a bunch. Uh, we don't need to worry about specs on the Tapu Fini or anything like that. Uh, but the Finny might switch out here, you know. But whatever comes in is going to take a decent chunk from the Wild Charge. And the battle is cancelled. So we locked it out pretty early. It would have been nice to see what my opponent had in the back. But very good game to my opponent. Um, Thunderous makes it difficult. Life very difficult for Lugia. And especially with the screen support there. We've got a very good example of how the team can kind of function straight off the bat. Not saying that uh, restricted. But we'll move on to our second game. And hopefully we can feature Groudon in that one. Okay, up next today we have a team of Solgaleo, Spectre, Grimmsnarl, Tapu Fini, Reggie Alecki, and Rotom Heat. So, that combination, Solgaleo, Spectre, we know all about it. It is going to be that bulldoze combination where they proc the weakness policy and Solgaleo just starts destroying things. Um, what's the best approach for us in this match? I mean, if we can get our Trick Room up, it would be phenomenal because I don't think that my opponent's got very much they can really uh, deal with in regards to that. I mean, we could go Venusaur, Groudon. It's not a bad option. Um... Just get some damage into the Sogaleo, really, initially, you know? It's it's quite a... Uh, oh, we could put the Spectre to sleep and then just go to town with Groudon, couldn't we? That might be a nice way to uh, approach this one. Uh, I think I will lead Venus or Groudon here. Got to watch out for the uh, the Will-O-Wisp from the Spectre onto Groudon, of course. Um, I think we go Incineroar and... Do we want Stacks or Grimmsnarl? 
stack attack is really tempting here because we could probably position it pretty well in this match. It's just the fact that, uh, yeah, we'll go stacker. Let's go stacker. Let's go stacker. Taka. Uh, yeah, we've got a. It's going to be tricky. I think we just need the, the right board position to get stack attacker in, get the trick room up, and then from there, it, 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 it seems pretty easy. It's easy for me to sit here and say, yeah. Just need that trick rumor, but it's it's a lot more difficult getting it up in certain situations. It's going to be the big thing that my opponent is going to always try to prevent as well. Imagine we'll see Sogaleo and Spectre come out for my opponent. Ooh, no. Ah, we should have led stacks. Okay, well, I mean, it's, you know what, this isn't, this isn't terrible at all. Because we've got the opportunity to get a big max attack off with, with, uh, with Venusaur straight away into that, um, into the Tapu Fini, which is always very useful. Um, so, G Max Vine Lash, get that ticking away. And we could Sword Stance as well, which puts us in a phenomenal position. It really does. Yeah, I think we do that. I think my opponent's got to switch out. I think, well, they've probably got screen support, but I mean, even with the screens up, Tapu Fini is going to take a bunch of damage. It's not really going to get much damage in return. It's going to be in a really awkward spot the next turn. Thunder Wave could definitely be something that we see from Grimmsnarl, you know? It's not, well, let's not discount that. And they could fake out Groudon as well. There's plenty of options where they could go. Um, But Venu, Venu, or... Oh, <sighs> Venusaur has surprised me to no end throughout the entirety of Sword and Shield. I think it's G-Max is just incredible. Uh, Sun's just become so much more powerful and prevalent, you know. And it's nice to see. We do see a trick. Is it the lagging tail? There we go. It is. <laughs> Stealing our life orb. How dare you do that? Okay, well, that's not so good. That's really not great. That kind of makes Venusaur... Um, redundant here, but at the same time, Groudon becomes a lot more of a threat, you know, with the Swords Dance. Um, and I think now we just concentrate on just bulking Groudon out because uh, if we've got um, Max, I think we got Max Quake here and just boost the special defense because. Really? What's my opponent got specially? Is it more physical? More physical based? Yeah, more physical based threats. I guess the Rotom could be a bit more of a pain for us to deal with. Uh, but there's no way, like they've not got a switch in for the, the Presbyterian Blades unless they bring the Rotom in. And the Rotom, that's one thing that could maybe cause Groudon a few issues, but we do have the Rock Slide, you know. Um, I think we maybe go for a, a, a lash into the uh, the Grimmsnarl here and just precipice because that'll clear the field whatever and whatever happens light screen expected what's the finny gonna do we outspeed the finny which is always useful uh, and Venusaur not even able to get an attack off right well let's see what my opponent goes for now Oh, the lagging tail. You hate to say it. You hate to say it because now we can't even put the Spectre to sleep. <laughs> Sogaleo is going to come in. Urgh. We need to lose it somehow. Um, Sogaleo Spectre. If that's in the back, we're in big trouble. I'm telling you now. There's one. Oh, it's Rotom. Okay, that's not so bad. That is not so bad. Um... Could be, could be worse, could be worse, could be worse, could be worse. We'll go for a max quick, and we'll go for... What are we going to see? What are we going to see? I think we need to max quick into the Sogaleo. Regardless, because Wild God could come out. It might be better rock sliding and go on max quick. If Venusaur can stick around, I don't think we're going to be able to, because I think the Rotom max is here. goes max flare. And we may see a wide guard as well from the Sogaleo. Who knows? Uh, so I think Venusaur's uh, <clears throat> numbers numbers up in this one. But oh, Sogaleo maxing. Okay. Problem is going for Max Quake into the Sogaleo as well. Is we probably proc a weakness policy, which is not ideal. 
But we'll be going last, so at least, you know. Okay, well. Are they doubling up into Groudon? Ah, we're not going to be... We should have protected here. We're not going to be able to get the max quake off. And we're just going <laughs> to... Please target Venusaur, Rotom. Please, please, please. Or at least if we can flinch the Rotom here, that would be amazing. Just a berry. A big, fat berry. We need Trick Room more than anything. Flinched. Okay, that helps. This isn't going to help. We're not got a Life Orb anymore. Special Defense Boost not so useful against the plus two Sogaleo that we've just procced the, uh, the berry on. There it is. I was like, for a minute, have they not got weakness policy? Of course they have. Of course they have. Uh, Gmax Fine Lash might come in useful here. Maybe. Maybe. Have we got any switches at all? I don't know if we have. Let's see. What have we got in the back? Stacker and Incineroar. Okay, I think we need to just try and bide our time a little bit, you know? We've got sleep powder we could take advantage of. We could try and get a sleep powder and try, try. <sighs> Protect. Protect Groudon. Groudon, is that going to be a good idea? Protect it. We've got to stall these max turns out. That's the thing. We've got to try and get Incineroar out into the field with that fake out so our stacks can get the trick room off. If we do that, then we can win this game. Steel Spike, where are you going? Into Groudon. Ideal. Okay. Rotom, you need to miss. You need to miss this, the uh, the overheat. You need to miss the overheat into Venusaur. Need to. Well, there's a Citrus Berry, so that gives us a little bit of hope. But if they overheat into Venusaur, we're done. Which they probably will. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way. Without the Sash, we're not going to be able to do that. Um... There is a there is a bit of hope here, you know. I think that that mm, really isn't actually stacks. I mean, we got the shucker, but I don't think we're going to be able to take a max quake. Okay, let's bring stacker in. Let's think about this. Let's think about this. Now, raw to minus two, not causing us any issues here at all. We trick room. We precipice blades. And if we get the trick room up, Groudon goes down, we're in a great spot. Because they're not maxed anymore. Stacker deals with the raw term in Cineral. Mm. It's going to find it difficult to deal with the Sogalea, but we do have access to fake up for at least a, a turn. Now, if they go off the stacks, which they do, Groudon doesn't need to worry too much about the Rotom. It's minus two. We get a Precipice Blades off into the Sogaleo. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, we could have Rock Slid here, but we're not going to get the damage onto the Sogaleo, which we definitely need the damage onto, you know? Oh, is a plus two Precipice Blades going to be enough to get the Sogaleo? A plus two defense? I don't think so. So, and you hate to see it. You hate to see it. Precipice blades. I hate you so much. I hate you so much. The sun fades as well. Nasty plot coming out. Well, um, Incy. Where are we going to go? Where are we going to go? The fake out's most obvious onto Silverleo here. And first to Rock Slide. I think we have to do that and then hope that we can take a plus two Earthquake. Because Groudon outspeeds Rotom. We may just see a double protect though. It's going to be tight, it's going to be tight, and it all comes down to what my opponent clicks button-wise. But I think mm, missing the Precipice Blades there is huge for us. I don't think we take it down, but they did the additional damage really 
swings the, the game a little bit more into like we're that little step closer to uh, to closing it out. So there's the protect. Okay, is the Rotom going to protect as well? No. So our Rock Slide here will take the Rotom down. At least Groudon's got his glasses on. So that's good. And a Precipice and a Flare Blitz. I don't think, a I, I really don't think a, uh, a Flare Blitz is going to be enough to take down this Sogaleo. Kind of just got to hope that Groudon can take an attack because a precipice blade single target will take this down are they going rock slide that's so risky that's so risky that is so risky you're going for the flinch ah, just max just earthquake earthquake there's no reason not to unless you just don't think that the the earthquake would get the ground on which it may not and we just win so out of nowhere we're able to pull it back a uh, very good game to my opponent and the team pulling out two wins today, which is always good. A bit iffy in that last one, but um, I think a, a really nice game. Entertaining, and hopefully you guys found it entertaining as well. So we'll wrap it up there. We'll get you the rental code for today's team, and hopefully you friends all enjoy it okay friends here is the rental code for today's team it is the ground on incineroar venusaur stack attacker grim snarl and thunderous incarnate hope you enjoy the team hope you have a lot of fun with it if you do try it out on the rank ladder if you do of course let me know down in the comment section below it would be great to hear and uh, we do have a lot of rental code teams that you've submitted uh, to play so we'll be doing those next week if you've got any more you'd like to see featured drop them down in the comment section below i just taken a little bit of time to feature some teams that I've had sitting around that I've been playing with off screen for a little while and just taking the opportunity to play them on the channel this week while we've got a bit of bit of time so I hope you've enjoyed them and like I say with the rental codes that have been submitted we'll be featuring a bunch of those next week if you've got teams that you'd like to see featured then drop them down below and we'll make sure to feature them as soon as possible but with that friends thank you so much for tuning in today hope you have a great rest of your day whatever time of day it is and um, I'll catch you all for another episode very soon so until then Take care of yourselves and bye-bye.